My name is Yolanda Chavez Leva, and this is my grandson. I am Joaquin Leva. And today we're going to be making two traditional dishes. I'll be making the nopalitos, the way that my mother made them. And then you, who are going to make what? Salsa de mocajete. So, we have all our ingredients, and the salsa and the nopales are going to share some of the ingredients. Both of us are going to use onion, tomato, and garlic. For the nopalitos, we're going to use the nopales and the corn also. And for the salsa, why don't you talk about what you're going to use? I'm going to use these peppers, peppers, as well as... And onion. Onion and garlic. And, and tomato. Tomato. So the first thing that we do before we use the molcajete is we toast the fresh vegetables because that gives them a deeper flavor and it allows us to get the skin off easier. So we're gonna move over here to this pan that I've had heating so we can put the chiles, the tomatoes the onions and the garlic. So the ingredients that we're gonna use for the salsa de molcajete are the poblano peppers and the serrano peppers. Sometimes we know that these are kind of mild, so this adds a, adds a little bit of heat. We're gonna use tomate. We're going to also grill half an onion, and we're going to also grill some garlic. So we're going to move over to the pan so we can start putting everything to char. So we're going to put the, the chiles down first. Do you, why don't you pull off some of the garlic? Now most basic that this is bad, but it ought to tell if it's not one because of its purple, but it won't. But this is actually fine. If it was starting to change, if it was soft, then it would be going bad. But those are very firm, right? Right. These are still very firm, meaning that they're okay. still good to cook. So I think we're going to put the half onion first. I think that's good. Okay. So I'm going to put the onion skin down to char. So while these are charring, I'm going to prepare the nopales. So because I go to a grocery store where they have a lot of traditional Mexican food, this morning I was able to get the nopales. It's the uh, Vista store on, on Piedra Street in Central El Paso. So I saw that they had the little cut-up nopales, but they didn't look as fresh as these. So sometimes I go out to my front yard and I cut the nopales myself, but it's a lot of work to get all the little thorns off. So if I can find like this, it's much better. So I'm going to show you a way to cook them that gets rid of all this gel texture that they have. Sometimes people don't like them because they don't know how to cook them and it's very uh, baboso. So I'm going to cut them in strips. And then in little squares. When I've gone to Mexico, especially uh, I've traveled in Morelos, which is in central Mexico, the farmers tell me that when they're out working in their fields all day, they cut the pencas of the, of the nopal, they peel them, and then they just grill them on the fire, and that's what they have for lunch. 
So I'm especially attached to the nopal for, for several reasons. I'm attached to it because it's one of the ancient plants, but also because about 10 years ago I was diagnosed as being diabetic. And the nopal is one of the traditional plants used to treat diabetes because of the high fiber content that it has. So every morning I take some uh, nopal tablets, some nopalina. So I'm going to show you the way to cook the nopalitos so that they don't feel slimy and that they're very fresh and edible. So we have all the nopalitos cut up and we have it in this pot on a very low heat. So we're going to put it like that and cover it and we're not going to put any water at all. It's just the nopal because the nopal produces its own liquid and I'll show you in a minute how much liquid it produces. And then when the liquid is all dried up, we know the nopalitos are cooked. Sometimes if you put it in water, it gets more slimy. So this is a way that I learned in Mexico to cook them. The other thing we're going to check, because I can smell it already, is the chiles. So the chiles are toasting. So we're going to move them around. So I do, I do as much as I can with my hands without burning myself because I really like to feel the food while it's going through the process of, of changing. So I'm going to turn this onion over. Okay, so all of that, everything's charring. The nopalitos are starting to cook. Now we're going to prepare the corn. So this corn is going to be for the nopalitos. And I like to get the corn that's in the husk. Because I know that it's been more protected that way. And I'm going to ask Joaquin to get the corn silk off. So get the corn silk and we're going to put it right here. So if you've ever husked fresh corn, you know that it has all these little silk. And here's from a corn that we prepared earlier. And the reason that we're saving the corn silk is because we can make a tea out of it. It's a tea that is, is very good for... Uh, for your kidneys. So you can make it fresh. You can just put this in some water and steep it a little bit or you can dry it and usually I dry it because I'm not going to make the tea right away. So you just pull all the corn silk you can. If you want you can also save this for tamales. So we get as much of the silk as we can off of it. If nopal is one of the essential Mexican plants, corn is up there too. Uh, corn has been grown in Mexico and Central America for 9,000 years. And it's a plant that isn't wild. It was created, it was domesticated by people. It came from a wild grass called Teocintle, and Teocintle means first energy or primary energy. So, and it's very delicious, raw, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. So, corn is an important plant because it, especially when you put a gal in it, it creates something that's very digestible and also very, very full of nutrients. So corn is 
one of the primary plants in Mexico. It's one of the mother plants. And it's a plant that has a relationship or a contract with human beings. Corn doesn't plant itself. Corn doesn't plant itself and it doesn't grow in the wild. It needs people to plant it. And for people to get the nutrition of the corn, we have to grow it and pay attention to it. So it's a relationship that's reciprocal. The corn needs us and we need the corn. You know, I started I started cooking traditional food again after so many years of fast food and easy food. I started cooking it again recently. And the reason that I started to cook traditional food again was because of Joaquin, because of Mijo. I wanted to start, I was very interested in our history. I wanted to start making salsa dip. I wanted to use this more character. And she was very excited about that, and I was very sad because I had never used a mocha. Because I had never used a mocha before. I am the first. I am the first generation to use this mocha hatte. Yeah, you're the fourth generation, and he's the first of my grandchildren that really loves the mocha hatte and understands that you, you feel it with your hands, that you feel the food with your hands. No one else has understood that of the other but grandchildren. Every time there's a meal that we can use the mocha hete for, I immediately say mocha hete, nothing else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, last weekend we ground pumpkin seeds and I told you, should we grind them in a food processor? And what did you say? No, we're doing this traditionally. Mm -hmm. Going traditional or nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. So every time that I chop tomato and onion and garlic, I think of my mother, because she cooked everything, everything, everything with those three ingredients. No matter what she was cooking, she started with onion, garlic, and tomato. So I always think of her. And you know, I was raised here in El Paso, but when I talk to people from Chihuahua, which is where my mother was from, they say that that's a very Chihuahua thing to start with those three ingredients. So I'm using just the fresh tomato for the nopalitos because we're going to saute it a little bit and then we're going to char the other tomatoes for the salsa. Okay, so everything that is charred already, like the serranos and the garlic. Can you hand me that bag over there, mijo? Can you hand me that, that clear bag? No, the other bag? Yeah. So to make it easier to peel them, we're going to put everything that's already charred into a bag for a little while. It makes it sweat and it makes it easier. So we're just going to do that for now. And then I'm going to start chopping this onion a little. I'm going to chop it just a little bit because Joaquin is going to grind it in the molka head there. So this char, even though it's on the outside of the skin, it gives us a little taste. And then I put it on that side so it would char even more. Okay. So I'm going to just chop it a little bit. And then when we get all the ingredients together for the salsa, he can explain what order we chop things in. Okay. So the chile takes a longer time to char than the tomatoes, for example. So we're just going to put these a much shorter time. So you can see now that I just I just stirred it so you can see that there's both cooked nopales and still the raw. And I don't know. Let me see. But you can see that there's 
the liquid. So they're making their own liquid to cook in. And what we know is that when there's no more liquid like this, then they're going to be all cooked. And it has to be on a very low flame because you don't want it to burn. So those are doing great. I think now, oh yeah, so you can see this is really charred. So I'm going to do this for one more minute. So we keep moving things around so that all the sides are charred. So you can see the tomatoes getting nice and charred. Like I said, that only takes a little while, so you really have to keep an eye on the tomatoes. Okay. So I'm going to turn this off. We're going to do two things right now different to get the skin off. So get the little bag. So this is for the chiles for your salsa, so hold the bag for me. And we're going to put these in to sweat a little bit. There. So we're going to leave those in for a few minutes, a couple of minutes. Okay, hold it up here. And then the tomatoes, for the tomatoes we need a bowl of water. So we have a bowl of water and we're going to put the charred tomatoes in the water. And the charring is going to give them some flavor, but it's also going to help the skin come off once we put them in the water. So I'm going to put these right here. So look at this, all the liquid that is is coming out in the nopalitos. It's just as if we had put water in it, so it has lots of liquid. Here, let me let me see if I can show you. It has lots of liquid in it. That's why it's steaming so much. So it's doing very, very good. So you can see how easily the peel is coming off, right? Right. And it's okay if there's some peel left in the salsa, right? Right. I'll just add a tiny bit of flavor. Yeah. The story of the book they had to go to use is actually quite interesting. One. The book I had there was my great grandmother's, and she was born, and she was, she moved here, and she decided that she didn't want to be a traditional Mexican, she wanted to be a modern Mexican. So she threw this out into the back, Mocajeta out into the backyard. And just left it there too, for years. And it wasn't until my abuelita was an adult that she took it back into the house and saved it. And, now, and taught my dad and now me. Yeah, my mother came to the United States when she was nine years old. And she came from a very traditional Mexican family. But she went to six years of elementary school that had an Americanization program. And she was growing up in the 20s when they had flappers. So she did lots of things to make her father mad. She cut her hair really short. She wore short dresses. And you can see it in her cooking because she also wanted to cook like an American. So sometime in my childhood, she put the mocajeta in the backyard and it just stayed back there until I got in my 20s and then I went and got it because I wanted to know how to use it. So it's a real special gift to me to be able to teach Joaquin how to use the mocajeta. I'm glad I, I really wanted to learn how to use it. I was very interested in it. And 
so that this I'm the first one to fasten my generation the fasten my generation to use it. I want to teach if I grow up I want to teach others how to use the morphine tech. And to be able to pass it say that I passed it on to someone else. Mm -hmm. I think probably he's the only generation out of everybody, of all the cousins and everybody. I think he's the only one that knows how to use a molcajete or even is interested in using a molcajete. Because even some people say that that this stuff is long gone and doesn't need to be put into the modern day same offer. I believe that we should keep traditional things like that. Because if we don't remember our traditional ways, then how are we going to know who we were, who our ancestors were, and what they experienced through our life? Mm -hmm. How's it going with the peeling? We're almost done here. Okay. It's going to be a little bit for that tomorrow because that'll just add to taste. You want to try to peel as much as you can. Okay. When you're through peeling them, put it, put them right here, so that I can put the chili in the water. Okay. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Okay. Just gotta peel those. So I have right here the charred onion that's going to go into the salsa, and then the fresh onion that I'm going to saute for the nopalitos, and you can tell the difference in the texture. These are kind of soft and nice. These are the garlic. Mm -hmm. Skin. These are the skin garlic. You can see the chavis on it. Why did you put them in the molcajete? I put them in the molcajete because you want to put them in fa. Because you want to put them in fa. Fast with the uh, as well as the onion, so that way you get everything. So that way you get the garlic, the flavor of the garlic throughout the entire process. Yes. Do you want me to help you peel something? No, I'm fine. Okay, I'm going to look at the nopales, mijo. So they're, they're cooking really well. The liquid is almost gone. So once it's gone, we know that it's ready to do the second part. In fact, I think I might start sautéing the vegetables while he is peeling. I think I'll do that. So the liquid is almost all dry in the nopales. And that's when we'll know it's ready. So I'm sautéing the garlic and the onion. So we're using two different kinds of chiles in your salsa de molcajete. Yeah. The poblano and what Joaquin is peeling right now, which is the serrano. Last week he made some and we used Anaheim pepper and then it was not spicy at all. So I went to my neighbor's yard and I found some chilte bean peppers and we put a couple in there because there's a wild chilte bean plant next door in my neighbor's yard. So the chilte bean, lots of people don't know the chilte bean. It's a little round red chile. It's really hot. It's the native pepper of this desert and of the Sonoran desert. And chilte bean is Nahuatl for tiny chile because it is a tiny chile. Okay, so we're doing good here. So now we... So let's... So let's rinse the seeds off. And then let's see. Rinse the seeds here. 
So I can tell it's, it smells really good. Can you smell how good the chile smells already? Yeah. It's going to taste great. It is going to taste great. And I can smell the garlic. But you kind of want to save this juice, right? Mm hmm So we've been saving this juice that has all the peels in it and the seeds. So if we need to make the salsa a little bit watery, we strain a little bit of the liquid and it has all the taste. It's like making stock where you use all the vegetables and the bones, except this is the juice for the chile. So this is almost dry, so we know it's almost ready. And the uh, onions are very sautéed. They're kind of crispy. So now we're going to add the tomato. So we're going to cook the tomato just a little bit. And when the tomatoes cooked a little bit, then we're going to add the corn, the fresh corn. And then at the end, the nopales. Yeah, they're almost done. So you ready to start making your salsa de molcajete? Yes. Okay, you have all your ingredients right here. So first we put in garlic. Not because it's the hardest to smash, but, but because you want the flavor throughout the meal as well as onion, the salt onion, because it's the hardest thing to, to match. Let's start with, let's put this all in. This is going to be the hardest to do, so you do this first. If you listen to the sound, you can hear the sound of the onions crushing. So I've been teaching Joaquin to use all his senses when he's cooking, to hear how the food sounds. Remember we roasted some corn recently and you could yes. hear it? Yes. To feel it with his fingers, to smell it, and then to taste as you're, as you're making everything. So I'm, I'm chopping the chile, because this is a big chile, the poblano, I'm chopping it so it'll be easier for him to grind in the molcajete. And then because we don't know how hot these serranos are, I've only chopped one in case we only need to add one. It's chicken on the nopales. So it's almost totally dry now. And yeah, there's no more liquid at the bottom. Oh, just a tiny bit. So just a couple more minutes and I think they'll be ready. Mmm. And why I like them, this method, is because they stay kind of crispy still. So they're not all mushy. And they taste good. So in here we already have the we already have the tomato, the garlic, the onion sauteing. So I'm going to add the corn, the fresh corn that we peeled this morning. And I'm going to add some of the sea salt. So 
So I know that it's totally done when I pick it up like this and there's no liquid coming off of it. So almost. Okay, we're good over there. How are you doing? My exercise water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I was cutting the chile, my eyes hurt. The onions are almost done here. Just a little bit of candy. What you prefer? Like this, I'm going to taste the chili because you want to know how spicy it is. It's mild. Okay. Well, then it's good. That one is very, very hot. That is super hot. <laughs> <laughs> that is so we'll use one super hot and then the mild ones, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to add the nopales to the mixture now because they are done. So you can see that they've all cooked and we didn't add any water. ready for the next step. What do you think? Mm -hmm, it looks good. So this is the finished. This, so now we're going to add some chili. In yeah. There. Here, let's add this real spicy one. Okay. So what can you smell right now from what you've ground? Spiciness. Yeah, spiciness. I smell the garlic real strong. But ground gives your leg out all the flavors. It would it's been far. If you notice it's a lot there's a lot more juice, there's a lot more liquid in it. That was from grounding the onion. It's a bunch of new flavors in mm -hmm. the mix. Tell me when you're ready for this chili. Get away from the mix. Too. Obviously, you don't want too much chili. Can I put some of this chili in my nopales? Of course. Okay. That would be delicious. Now we're going to add some tomatoes to your salsa. Here you go. You ready for this? Yes. Most of the juice left out when you cut again. Do you want me to give you some of the juice from? Yes. So this is the juice that we had from the peels. Ready? Ready. Tell me if you want more. Uh, a little bit or no? A little bit more. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay. I'm going to see what it's like to put some of this juice in the nopales because it's very tasty. Last week I just put it in a cup and I drank it. It was delicious because it has all the taste of the Salsa. Okay. Are you 
you going to taste it to see how it is? Yes. Then, but there's money be able to see. A little bit of salt, just a bit. Okay. Tell me, like this or more? Well, let's taste it right there. Well, we're going to taste it right there. There we go. Let's get a little bit of everything. It had a bit more. More salt? It's good, but it needs a little bit. Not too much. So this is queso fresco that I made a couple of days ago. And it's whole milk, vinegar, salt, and jalapeno. And I've been making it every week because I love cheese so much. And I discovered that if I make my own food, I don't eat as much because I know how much work went into it. So I, and I taste it better. Also, like I pay more attention to it since I'm making it. So we're going to have this on our taquitos de nopales. I need a little plate. Okay, so here is our traditional Mexican food. Provecho. What do you think? Mm, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. You taste a bit of everything, those new flavors that you would usually taste if you cook this. Mm. This is delicious. Your salsa is delicious. Thank you. Mm-hmm.